What's up and welcome to the DualSense podcast, a PlayStation news podcast. This is episode 120, 120. My name is Jason. I'm one of your co-hosts and I'm joined as always by your other co-host whose name this afternoon is Alenki, otherwise <laughs> known as Travis. What's going on? How are you, Travis? I'm good. This Lenky. <laughs> For uh, those uh, who don't know, who is which is everyone, the, uh, that's a phone call, a voice message I got from way back at one of my previous jobs. So I'm on week week two of night shift, which I'm stuck on through Christmas, which is fine, whatever. But anyway, uh-huh. I, uh, I have a team lead, an area lead, actually. Uh, we're sitting down at lunch, and he comes and sits in front of me, and we're watching. This is opening night of the NBA, so we're watching Lakers, Warriors. We're just watching the game. Big basketball guy, so you know, we're just talking shit about basketball. Anyway, mm-hmm. he opens up his lunch, and um, we're from two different backgrounds. Like, you know, I guess I'm like on, I'm in the suburb, almost in the country, I guess you could say, where I grew up, and he's inner city, like straight inner city, metropolis kind of thing. Yeah. Really different backgrounds. And he pulls out his food and he's got like lamb shakes. He's got some barbecue sauce. And when I saw it, I kind of like smiled and I looked over and one of my other area leads saw the same thing I did. We both just started, we just lo- like started dying laughing. And I looked at him and said, Hey man, I was like, uh, you got, what do you got there? What do you got there? And he's like, I got my, I got my lamb shakes and some barbecue sauce to dip it in. I was like, okay, man, why is your barbecue sauce in a dope bag? And he's like, <laughs> what? And I was like, you got like a barbecue sauce dealer? Like you meet up with him behind the building? Like, what do you mean? And he's like, he just starts, he fucking like falls over. He's just like, he's crying laughing. I'm like, nobody puts barbecue sauce in a bag and knots it. Like it's in a dime bag. Like this is like everything I've seen on TV, everything I've seen in drug training. This is a drug bag. Like, and he's just like, thinks it's the funniest thing ever. I was like, dude, like, like we pay you like fifty k, like you can buy Tupperware. Like <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you can get the little you can get the little tubs made for like sauce. Yeah. It's just dressing. like, but like, in, but you know, in his mind, like, oh, well, if I put it in the bag and tie it, it won't come out. I know it won't come out, but he knows that because he's moved weight that he couldn't oh, let yeah. come out. Like hilarious, it was awesome. As people tell you so much about themselves without meaning to. That's correct, uh, and you've got some characters working for you. There's no doubt about that. Speaking of people telling you things about about themselves without even asking and i'm doing great by the way thanks for asking <laughs> yes uh, you and i had lunch today uh, uh, just a few hours ago we had lunch and you're off today and i was at work but i've still got to eat lunch so so you and i got together and we had lunch at the buffalo wild wings we wanted some some wing of the wild buffalo as it were and we've been there many times before and today we we show up we sit down our server comes over she says, how are you guys doing? I say, good, how are you? And she proceeds to say, uh, can I get you guys something to drink? And I'm doing fine, thanks for asking, by the way. <laughs> and I said, yeah. yeah, I'll take a sweet tea. You say Mountain Dew or whatever. And she walks off. I mean, you look at each other like <laughs> a little bit stunned. And you go, you say, that's weird. I said, did, that, did she really just say that? And... <laughs> I was flabbergasted, first of all. I mean, the audacity of this young lady to get smart with me mm-hmm. in that way. I mean, I'm almost certain that I said, how are you? Because like, that's my reflex. Like, I, very rarely does someone in- inquire about how I am, and I respond with only how I'm doing, but not a, f- you know, and, and don't reciprocate, how are they? Very rare. So I'm almost certain that I said, good, how are you? Now... In her defense, it was a goddamn country concert in there today. They had the music turned up very loud. So maybe she didn't hear me because I, you know, I'm very soft-spoken or whatever. Like what my, my volume is very low. You know, I'm talking directly in the microphone now, so you guys can hear me perfectly fine. But normally I've got that really, you know, McConaughey thing going on, as I say. So I don't know. Maybe she didn't hear me, but I was really perturbed by that. I mean, I went back wow. to work. Yeah, I also went back. Yeah, I also went back to work in her defense, and I told the story. Someone said, "Well, maybe she was saying, oh, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking.' Like sincerely." But you and I both had the same reaction based on the tone of her voice, and I don't think that either one of us took it that way. We took <laughs> no, it as like, not. "Hey, oh, I'm great, asshole. Thanks for asking." By the way, yeah, that's why I looked at you like that. Like, <laughs> like, what did I miss? Like, did I miss something? Like, she came in hot. I guess. <laughs> like, like, well, she, she did. was a scorned lover. Ironic, yeah. I mean, you would have think that I dated her before or something. 
ironically, it was one of the better meals from from the B-dubs that I've had in a while. So One or the other. But I want everyone to know on the record that if I don't wake up tomorrow, you all will know why. Because what's her nuts? <laughs> That beat up poisoned my food because she thought that I didn't ask her how she was doing. So anyway, Travis, we are a PlayStation podcast where you and I get together each and every week. We discuss all things PlayStation, like news, rumors, new game releases, announcements, and much more. We do it all in under 90 minutes. and We post new episodes every Monday on all of the usual podcast services around the world, as well as YouTube, where we also share gameplay videos occasionally. I most recently posted some Dakar Desert Rally, which I reviewed for GamingNexus.com, so you can check that out if you please. You can also find us on social media. We would love to hear from you. Our primary feed is Twitter, where we go by at the DualSense Pod, but we're also on Instagram, where we share virtual photography, Facebook, where we don't do much of anything, like most of you probably, and we have a blog, which is called the DualSense Podcast.wordpress.com. So please find us and reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, without further ado, let's jump into a very mostly uneventful week of news here, Travis. Number one, PlayStation announced this week that the DualSense Edge PlayStation 5 controller will launch worldwide on January 26th. Pre-orders open on October 25th, and it is not cheap by any means, costing $200 in the United States, 29,980 yen in Japan. I have no idea how many yangs that might be, Travis. (laughs) 240 euros in Europe and 210 pounds sterling in the United Kingdom. Yeah, so that means 210 pounds of silver, right? You have to bring yes. in a bar- barrel full. That's correct. Okay. You got to roll into your game, whatever. I think that's the equivalent of GameStop over there. And with your, like you said, a barrel of silver. The replaceable stick modules, Travis, will cost $20 in the United States or your local equivalent. The DualSense Edge is PlayStation's take on a high end pro style controller for the PlayStation 5. Featuring back buttons, full control remapping, adjustable sticks and triggers, and the ability to change control profiles on the fly, among other features. The Edge comes with a number of accessories, including a USB braided cable, two standard caps, two high dome caps, two low dome caps, two half dome back buttons, two level back buttons, or sorry, lever back buttons, I should say, a connector housing, and a carrying case. All right, this is a little rich. What do you think about the Edge controller's price? Yeah, I don't know that I need a carry in case. That's an interesting thing, but yeah, I think I think the price is it's really high. I don't I don't know if it's cost prohibitive for me. It is, yeah, which probably means for other people it is too. Um, I like the idea that this exists—a a professional controller, if you will. I think um, if you're gonna have a serious console or a serious gaming thing, you should have a gaming controller, right? Like, there's PC controllers that are just crazy. You know, Xbox has their own versions. PlayStation needs one. Like, that's fair. $200, man. That's just, that's a steep curve for me. I don't know what a good price point is. Maybe half that. Because I'm hesitant to buy a headset for $100. You know what I mean? So, a headset that I feel like is more useful. Mm. You know, I've played with, I've bought dome caps before. I've played with Mm -hmm. high caps and low caps. I don't really have a preference there. Um... You know, the high dome for me felt a little more, uh, like I had more touch. I can see how yeah. adjustable, you know, you know, the full remapping is probably the most interesting thing to me. But again, it goes back to like, it's so overwhelming that I'm not sure I would even know how to use it correctly. And I'm, am I, am I going to take the time to watch seven YouTube videos about seven different controller mappings <laughs> for Call of Duty and then go sit down and try all of them and see which one feels better to mm. still go? 500 like it doesn't really work for me maybe it does for i guess serious gamers maybe that's maybe that's the target maybe i'm not it but i don't know i mean as a guy who has a sim rig that costs way more than this i i can i understand the the pull of unique accessories to make your gaming experience better um i did you know what i have is for immersion the controller doesn't really help you there it just makes you i guess better adaptable if you will but yeah, two hundred dollars is a steep price point for me. I, I'm not entirely surprised. It just, it just feels like a very. It's like when the iPhone comes out and it's fourteen hundred dollars for no reason. Like I don't know. I just it's just weird yeah. to me. Yeah, I just don't think this is for me. You know, it looks very cool, and I think the features are neat. But for two hundred bucks, they can get bent. Like I'm good. <laughs> I would much rather spend my two hundred dollars towards PSVR two. Honestly. 
And oh, that's yeah. what I would advise most people to do is to save the $200 and put it towards PlayStation VR 2. I feel like it's a much more worthwhile investment. I guess a little bit in PlayStation's defense, you know, Xbox sells their version of a pro Xbox controller, and I think it's like 170 or 180. So the price isn't too far off, and you can make the argument that for 20 more bucks, you get, you know, a carrying case, you get a braided cable, and you get all these attachments and whatever. So yeah, it's cool. But- I guess if you want, yeah. So I guess if you look at it from that sense, maybe there it is a good value proposition. The problem is, and I guess this is really an indictment on pro style controllers anyway, is that they're, they're basically, if we're, if we're going to call it like it is, they are for people who play first person shooters right. exclusively and who care, you know, they get, they, they, they're, they play sweaty. They care about winning. <laughs> they care about KD. Yeah. You know, they probably play only for, uh, Fortnite, Warzone, and apex legends all year, you know, rainbow six siege. Like that's all they play for people like that. I mean, yeah, this is probably some of the best $200 that they can spend. Mm -hmm. But for people like me and you and most people who do more than that in gaming, I don't think it's for us. As a matter of fact, I I did a poll on Push Square um, earlier this week, right after they they announced the price and everything. And it said, are you going to get the controller? And like almost 60% of people, I think, said no, no way. And that's pretty overwhelming for a a poll on there and it was like the the people who says like three percent of people said yes definitely so <laughs> it's a steep ask yeah. it's a steep sell and maybe sony knows that and they're perfectly fine with it mm-hmm. uh, potentially i don't i don't know but it begs the question of was it important enough to make one themselves as opposed to just keep letting somebody like scuff make one or you know license one to someone to make one for them you know did they have to devote like internal resources to this was it necessary i don't know number two publisher konami finally announced a long rumored revival of the silent hill franchise this week first up is silent hill 2 which is getting remade from the ground up for playstation 5 and pc by developer bloober team it's being made on unreal engine 5 and will feature realistic visuals as well as support for 3d audio no loading screens thanks to the ssd and dual sen- and support for the DualSense controllers, haptic feedback, and adaptive triggers. An interactive streaming series called Silent Hill Ascension was also revealed and will let fans shape the canon of Silent Hill. A new title called Silent Hill F is in development at Resident Evil, <laughs> Resident Evil Resistance developer Neo Boards Entertainment, and it is set in 1960s Japan. Scottish developer No Code announced Silent Hill Townfall, although we have no idea what kind of game it is. It's being published by Annapurna Interactive, however. And finally, a new Silent Hill movie is in the works called Return to Silent Hill. It is being developed by Christoph Gans, the same lad who directed the original 2006 film. The Silent Hill train doesn't appear to be stopping there, however, as Konami producer Motoi Okamoto said during the stream that more games are on the way from other development partners. So... Does Silent Hill move the needle for you at all? It does not for me. I have a very terrifying memory of Silent Hill, but what do you what do you think? Yeah, I'm not super stoked. It's 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 an IP that needs to exist. The the couple of things I do like about this though is they're they're giving you a Silent Hill F that's in the sixties. That's pretty fun. I think a Silent Hill in the forties Japan would be interesting. Um also Christoph Gaines, is that um is that Garth Brooks' alter ego? It might be. It might be his French alter ego. The the thing that's nice here that Konami did is they're they're it, yes it's a remake but it's from the ground up right they're going to give it the full PS5 treatment. Um, Bluber team has a track record with making decent stuff, so you have to think that taking a, a game that's really well loved, putting it on Unreal Engine five, updating the visuals, the 3D audio will make people shit their pants. The no loading screens will be awesome. Like mm-hmm. I think they're going to do a really good job with it, and they're doing it the right way. And again, this goes back to what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, like these developers given us full roadmaps like yeah that's a good you know point. this might be a it's like a 10 year plan you know like it, yeah again it's strange they could have just told us about the remake and people would have been stoked like they didn't need to know about ascension or silent hill f or mm-hmm. you know maybe ascension just because it's a streaming streaming series and you kind of feel like that might go together with the game it might come out around the same time mm-hmm. but the rest of this like they could have waited, but that's cool that they're letting us know, I guess. But no, I mean, I'm not going to play it, 
it being set in the 60s is, is somewhat interesting to me for some reason that kind of piques my interest but i'm not going to i'm not going to play it i might watch a few <laughs> yeah i think you, that's a really good point actually about you know we talked about recently about how there's this new phenomenon of developers and publishers just like telling us everything they're working on for the foreseeable future regardless of what state of development that they're in and um, there's something else going on with that in the industry that isn't quite clear because otherwise all of these major publishers in my opinion would not be doing this my theory on it is that they are all competing for talent and staff and probably probably like every other industry it's hard finding good people right now and i bet that they are having to just like like you say lay out the roadmap lay everything out in, in public so people are like oh wow whoever is making silent hill f a 1960s japanese silent hill game that looks awesome i'm gonna go work for them and make that game you know what i'm saying so that's my theory on that otherwise i don't know what this new fad is all about in terms of silent hill itself none of this is for me <laughs> it you know it, it, it's it's news so it's in our show but none of this is for me this all sounds terrifying and i don't want to be scared this bad now the remake looks very good the photos uh, that they've shown the screenshots and everything it it looks and sounds very good seems like it's going to be a very worthwhile remake with that said people do not trust bloober team um, Bloober Team is one of those developers that people are either hot or cold on. There's like no in between. So I that'll probably turn a lot of people on. It'll turn a lot of people off. I don't know that they've truly ever made like a really great game. So I think that kind of is working against them in a way. But mm -hmm. we'll see. Maybe maybe the power of the IP itself um, and having Konami on board too, helping will you know kind of get them over the hump. Maybe this is what they yeah, need. We'll have that. They'll have that pressure too. Like they'll have a, they'll, they'll have legitimate, talented eyes on them. True. Well, I like if if it's bad, can we call them blooper team? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> also, just my kind of like overarching thought about all this is: is Silent Hill so important that we need this many Silent Hill games, like in a movie, a new movie? Like, is I don't know, is Yakuza that important? I don't know. That's a good point. I mean, I understand. Like, I guess. Historically, Silent Hill is a is very important to the horror genre of games. I, I I I get that, I guess, but I guess what I'm trying to say is like to me, and and obviously these aren't for me anyway. So maybe that's maybe I'm just detached from it. But like this isn't this isn't Mario. This isn't Resident Evil. This isn't I don't know Street Fighter. Like this isn't Call of Duty. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't mm -hmm. I just don't know that we need all this. Uh, but what do I know? Number three, Konami wasn't the only publisher that showcased their horror franchise this week, as Capcom also held a Resident Evil showcase. The rather lengthy live stream provided updates on Resident Evil 4, Village, and Reverse. For starters, Resident Evil 4 Remake got five minutes of gameplay footage and a March 24th release date. Meanwhile, Resident Evil Village Gold Edition is dropping on October the 28th, along with it, and along with it comes the Winter's Expansion, which includes three major add-ons. The Shadow of Rose DLC, which follows Ethan Winter's daughter, a third-person mode, and additional orders for the Mercenaries mode. And finally, multiplayer game Reverse is also launching on October the 28th, and will be included for free in Resident Evil Village, although I think it's also going to be available a la carte. Players can also participate in Early Access for Reverse from October the 24th through October 26th, although you must register at the Capcom website. What's interesting is that the Resident Evil showcase was co-streamed by PlayStation and included the usual state of play branding on their YouTube channel, as well as a fresh look at Resident Evil Village running in PlayStation VR 2. So that was something different that we haven't seen before, PlayStation co-streaming a publisher's showcase. But uh, anyway, what do you think about Resident Evil? Another <laughs> is the week of the horror shit. It's, it's October. Um, yeah, fair. Not it's as it's as important to me as Silent Hill, uh, but less interesting than Silent Hill for some reason. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm. I mean, I don't know. I guess I trust Konami more with this. Resident Evil always freaked me the fuck out, like those little crawly things, and I have oh, vivid yeah. memories of losing my shit playing the game. So I I don't want to touch it again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who any of these characters are. 
will not be participating in early access. Although I do think that's a good idea for them. I think uh, you know early access on any game really that's it, it's an easy way to it's just an easy way to get more people into your game. And like I also enjoy the free weekends and the free access you can get eyes on your game. I think that's yeah. also a good idea. The coolest thing to me about all this, or at least the most interesting, is the last note that PlayStation's co-streaming this mm-hmm. is 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 interesting. Um, but also you get to see a game running in, in PS VR two, a game that you would think PlayStation would have a lot of weight on because you you wouldn't want a, a, a title like Resident Evil to look a certain way to function and flow a certain type of way. So mm-hmm. to show us that on VR right now, I think is a good indicator of where that that system is at this point. So I mean, I know some are already in production, so you would hope it would be functioning well, but yeah, it, it makes me feel like. They've got the software in a decent place, at least. Um, something that, you know, the, all the production really means anymore is the hardware can work, right? And seeing a game run on it means the software is working the way it's supposed to. So that's a good sign. Yeah, Resident Evil is another another franchise that's just not for me. The only game that I think that I've ever played, like, start to finish is Resident Evil 5, which I think arguably is like one of the lowest regarded games maybe like I, and you could probably say it's like the least resident evil game that there is in the entire franchise potentially so it's just not for me i appreciate what they've been doing with the remakes they seem to all be of really high quality and i understand how important the franchise is in general but it just doesn't it doesn't speak to me at all but like you said the most interesting thing is that PlayStation co-streamed this. I don't remember them ever having done this in the past for any publisher or developers like showcase event, basically. So I wonder if that means anything exactly. I guess time will tell. I do think it's interesting as well that, like you said, that we saw more footage of Village running on PlayStation VR 2. I think that the launch of PlayStation VR 2 is going to be pretty strong. I think it's going to have a lot of of titles on offer right at the very beginning, which I think is smart. And I think PlayStation has, has hinted as, as much that they are going to have a lot available. But um, the fact that we keep seeing these games pop up for it is, is exciting. Number four, Spider-Man 2 developer and PlayStation Studio Insomniac Games told fans to fear not when it comes to the highly anticipated game this week. Replying to fans in a Twitter thread who were speculating as to why we have not seen more of the game yet, and throwing out the dreaded D word, as in delay. Insomniac chimed in and said, quote, Don't worry, we're making good progress and it's for 2023. Showing games takes time, effort, resources, and coordination. End quote. Spider Man 2 was originally revealed at a PlayStation showcase in September of last year with a stunning trailer. Beyond that, the best info we have on the game came from Marvel Games Vice President Bill Roseman, who described the game saying, quote, There are multiple foes. I can say that the story very much continues and picks up from Marvel Spider-Man to Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. I don't want to reveal too much, but it's the next big chapter. There are a lot of threads, a lot of characters that were in the first two games that you'll see here. End quote. So, your Mm. Spider-Man 2 is doing just fine. What do you think? I don't think it's going to... Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that. It could get delayed, but I don't... That's kind of a rash jump to make just because we haven't heard anything in a while. Um, I think the people need to calm down a little bit there. That being said, um, I kind of hated his reasoning, like showing games takes time, effort, resources, and coordination. Like so does everything. So does making the game. So like sure. Do it or don't. Like I mean, that also begs the question, like, what did what did people do before we had showcases and trailers for games? Like they would just see cover art and buy games. Can you imagine? Like Right. It's just, so I mean it kind of goes both ways there. Expectations on both sides seem to uh be running into each other there, but my prediction based off the last comment there is that I assume you'll get to play not that you t- maybe you can't play multiple characters is kind of what I'm thinking maybe you could be yeah. Miles Morales and Spider-Man or you could be I don't know I mean there's obviously going to be multiple villains how yeah. you know how is that going to work so there's a lot to be unpacked there but uh, I think people are worrying a little bit too much I think they're just bored because they're yeah. waiting on the God of War so they're like what can we freak out about for a little bit you know I don't think it's anything super, super serious. Yeah, I think that of all of the PlayStation developers, PlayStation Studios that we don't have to worry about, I think one of those is, is Insomniac. <clears throat> they they seem to be one of the most efficient 
studios that PlayStation has. This is the same team that put out, you know, Marvel Spider Man, and then Ratchet and Clank, and then Miles Morales. I'm sorry, I got that out of order. <laughs> Miles or uh, Spider Man, and then Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank within like. I guess two years, three years, they did all of that in two and a half years, basically. So I don't think we have to worry about them. I think 2023 is probably a safe bet. My guess is summer at the earliest, uh, early fall at the latest for that game. Uh, I, th- I think it's fine. I think that you make a compelling point. I think the game will have multiplayer of some sort. I don't know if that'll be co-op. I don't know if that'll be a mode, um, but I definitely feel like that's a thing. And if I remember correctly, I think Spider-Man, the original, they found source code or something when it came to uh, to PC that included files for co-op. So I think that was a thing at one point, or at least, you know, explored. Um, and the fact that we have two Spider-Mans now, I think that that bodes well, um, even if it's something that's added later on, like Ghost of Tsushima, like some type of co-op mode like that, or uh, I think that'd be, that could be cool. I think that's yeah. probably something that they're working on. You both play as Spider-Man, I guess, right? You were born yeah. to the other? You know, Miles is wearing his suit and Spider-Man, Peter Parker's wearing his suit, whatever type of thing. So I think that could be cool. I think that could be cool. Uh, I don't think we have to worry about a delay. I think I think they're just waiting on the green light from Sony uh, to have a showcase. They probably, they probably already have, you know, assets, a trailer or whatever ready to go. I think they're just waiting to do it, which... At this point, I don't think they were going to get a showcase of any sort before God of War Ragnarok. And I'm starting to wonder, and this is just another tinfoil hat theory, but we've talked about way back how PlayStation uh, had had trademarked or re-updated the trademark for PlayStation Experience, which used to be like their sort of showcase in-person thing that they used to do in December. Although I feel like it's probably getting a little bit too late to hold something like that because you would be needing to announce that soon and invite media and press. But some, I mean, I don't know. I just, I wonder if they're going to wait until after God of War, but I'll also go back to what I said last week or the one before where another part of me says that, okay, if we don't hear anything about a showcase before God of War Ragnarok, then I think at some point after Ragnarok, maybe in December, they're just going to do like a PlayStation VR two thing. They're going to focus on that. They're going to, you know, pimp all that out, pump all that up. And up until launch and probably March-ish, somewhere around there. And then after PSVR 2 gets out, or maybe sometime between then and the launch of PSVR 2, we get a proper showcase about you know what's coming the rest of the year, the rest of 2023, what's coming to PlayStation 5, and so on. So I could see that. Um, that would suck to have to wait that long. But like I said, the, the tension would be palpable at that point. Number five, we also have a bunch of news nuggets here as well, Travis. Feel free to jump in here and join me. First nugget, reviewers have gotten their hands on God of War Ragnarok this week, and as such, some info began to trickle out, including that the game will feature four graphical modes, a 4K 30 frames per second mode, a 60 frames per second mode, a 4K 40 frames per second mode, and a 120 frames per second mode, and the last two require a TV that supports HDMI 2.1, so that you can run it in 120 hertz mode. Very excited about it. I did not want to read any of the preview coverage. I just want to fucking play the game. But in general, (laughs) people are very high on it. Also, website Video Games Chronicle reported that Netflix is making big moves in the gaming industry. First off, they are developing a cloud gaming service based off of lessons learned from the failure of Google Stadia. They're also opening a new internal development studio led by Overwatch executive producer Chaco Sunny. What a name. (laughs) And uh, I know that's not PlayStation related, but they could be a potential competitor yeah i'm not surprised they're doing that i i kind of thought it would happen sooner sure also more documents were made public from the british cma this week that's the competition and markets authority regarding the activision deal in which microsoft revealed that call of duty will not come to xbox game pass quote unquote for a number of years due to an existing deal between sony and activision which prevents it from happening so that's we know that it's two years yeah well that's the marketing deal that we you know like you said that sony and uh, Activision have had. That's why we get, you know, early access to shit. That's why we get PlayStation Plus content packs and whatever. So, in that deal, they said no, no, no Game Pass. 
Speaking of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2 will add the first three-player raid to the game's Spec Ops mode on December the 14th, and curiously, the same update will also add a quote-unquote legendary multiplayer map that we were speaking about last week, actually, as well as the first major update for Warzone 2.0. I'm, a, I'm excited about the raids. Hopefully I can get you guys to try it. Raids sound cool. I just, I just don't understand Warzone. I'm trying so hard. Yeah. I'll give it a fair shake. I'll give it a fair shake. I'm interested, too, in that DMZ mode or whatever. Mm -hmm. See what that's about. That sounds kind of like the Dark Zone from the Division. Next nugget, Electronic Arts announced its next-gen Sims game, codenamed Project Renee, this week, but it is still years away. The Sims 4 has officially gone free-to-play on PS4 this week as well. EA also announced that online services for several of its games will be going offline in the near future. Army of Two, The 40th Day, and The Devil's Cartel on October the 20th. Mercenaries 2 on PS3, Command & Conquer Red Alert 3 on PS3, Onrush on November the 30th, and Beer's Edge NBA Jam on Fire Edition, Gatling Gears, and Shank 2 on January 19th. They forgot all those games existed. <laughs> I know. NBA Jam on Fire Edition was pretty cool, actually. Also, Apex Legends Season 15 will feature a new trans female character called Catalyst, a new map, a cross-platform gifting system, and more. Mm -hmm. The new season launches on November the 1st. Also, just a PSA reminder that this month's PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium games are now available on the PlayStation Store. Developer Numskull Games, <laughs> great name, nice. announced, that yeah, announced that their long-in-development Jack and Daxter ripoff called Clive and Wrench will launch <laughs> on PS4 and PS5 in February. A second season of the extremely popular Netflix series Cyberpunk Edgerunners is not in development, and the show's producer stated that season one was meant to be a standalone project. It's interesting, because usually they money grab. Um, is the producer British? Because that's a very British thing to do. They'll just like stop making shows. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Activision is working to patent the ability to automatically generate in-game soundtracks unique to each player in multiplayer games. That's oh, interesting. What? I wouldn't yeah. know what I wanted to hear. I don't know. It knows you like Bob it. Seeger, and so it's going to give you some Seeger. This automatically generate implies that it knows, like it listens to my phone. It would be different if it was like you could, you know, you could play oh, yeah. Spotify in the background or something, you know. Oh, no, it's listening. Also, David Gribble, the director of the in-development Splinter Cell remake, has left Ubisoft after 11 years with the company. Good sign. Yeah, good sign for it. Do you think he has a... Uh, sexual harassment charge coming that's why he left this seems to be what happens mm, that's a fair point honestly that could be could be also more files data mined from a recent elden ring update indicate that an expansion to the game will include some sort of arena based mode or feature of some sort blizzard announced that more than 25 million players have played overwatch 2 in its first 10 days on the market for context the first game garnered just 15 million players in its first three months after launch Warner Brothers sneakily revealed that the recently released Gotham Knights does not have a performance mode and is locked to 30 frames per second despite being a current-gen-only game. The game is out now, of course, and that's all been confirmed. They said it has something to do with the untethered open-world co-op nature of the game and not being able to support the higher frame rate. A staff member and developer, Rocksteady Games, claimed that the game and games in general were being held back by having to develop for the inferior Xbox Series S. Ooh. Oh, yeah, because the consoles don't matter. They should really warn a brother before they release games like this. Imagine if you bought it uh, pre-order, and then it's like, hey, it's locked, and then you get motion sickness hmm. from that. Yeah. Also, speaking of that, Travis, multiple developers beyond the gentleman from Rocksteady are asking Xbox allegedly to drop the Series S as a mandatory console to release their title on. Bossa Studios, for instance, said that the console has, quote, turned out to be an albatross around the neck of production, end quote. This, of course, comes following the gentleman that I was speaking of from Rocksteady publicly saying that the S was holding this generation back. God. Mm. People were going in on that Series S this week. In similar news, a Plague Tale Requiem launched this week with only support for 1440p and 30 frames per second on PlayStation 5. How is that? I mean, what are we doing? How, that's, how is that next gen? Come on. Resident Evil producer Yoshiaki Hirabayashi <laughs> told a website Noisy Pixel that there are no plans to remake Resident Evil Code Veronica. I know you're very upset. They have so many fucking other things. Well, it was 
the one person at Noisy Pixel was like, but I love Veronica. Do you have that? I, they're making 11. <laughs> yes. Final Fantasy 16 revealed a new trailer this week that reaffirmed the game's summer 2023 release date. Producer Naoki Yoshida also said that the game has "quote unquote" entered the home stretch of development. Wonderful. Several hours of Diablo 4 beta footage have leaked online. If you're interested, or if you're wanting to avoid it, website Push Square reported that a new rumor from leaker Millie Amond has claimed that Sony delayed plans for a PlayStation showcase scheduled for October 20th due to the ongoing British CMA investigation into the Activision Blizzard deal. Sony allegedly had fears that announcing new exclusive games at said showcase would strengthen Microsoft's arguments against Sony. So what push square actually said that this was very outrageous to even claim that this was the reason for it. But I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that it's true, but I, I don't think it's as far fetched as people act like. I think that's not a terrible conspiracy. Like that's relatively yeah. makes sense. I mean, if you yeah. read the comments of some of the other, like, like what Brazil said, some of the stuff we've heard about, like what our people are saying about it, as yeah. opposed to what the British CMA is saying, you could see kind of how that might be twisted in a, in a bad light for PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, I could see that being the case. But on the other hand, they did just announce Silent Hill, you know, 2 as a PlayStation 5 exclusive this week. So, you know, I don't know if that matters or not. But on the other hand, on the other hand of the other hand, Sony didn't announce that. Konami did. So maybe that's their out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think it's that far fetched because if you're in this war of public relations and so to speak, why would you go and put a showcase out that's gonna have all this shit that Microsoft's just gonna turn around and point their finger at? Like, look, we fucking told you, look, they just announced three more exclusive mm-hmm. games over there. You know? So I could see that. Also it'd be it'd be bullshit if we have to wait until the CMA makes their decision before we get a freaking showcase. Give me a break. Yeah. Get twenty twenty five. Yeah. Speaking of the CMA, Travis, they are now seeking public comments on the Activision deal. Why? They're going to get some great ones. Yeah. What What do they need? That it's like when they ask me for <laughs> the other day when Microsoft Office asked me for a review, and I just wrote Phil Spector sucks. <laughs> Phil Spector? You mean Phil Spencer? <laughs> Whatever. Phil Spector's a person too. <laughs> Phil Spector. That's so good. That's what he really is. He's a Spector. Anyway. Oh wow. Microsoft also stated in their most recent filing to the CMA, Travis, that Sony plans to release a PS5 exclusive Wolverine in 2023. Truly, they're mistaken, but what if they're not? I mean, what if we get Spider Man and Wolverine next year? I can't imagine that, but. Yeah, it's, it feels like we'll get, you know, it's like God of War, Spider Man, Wolverine. It's yeah. like one of those a year, but if they're going to give us, yeah. they could give us two and they're both quality. I mean, hell, bring it on. I think Wolverine's 2024. I think that Microsoft just was trying to put that in there to make it sound, you know, Mm -hmm. again, exaggerate. Also, Bungie is bringing back their long-forgotten first-person shooter series called Marathon, according to insider Tom Henderson, whose sources say the title will be a live-service, three-man, squad-based extraction shooter, sort of like the Dark Zone from The Division. Marathon is a sci-fi shooter first released in 1994 for the Apple Macintosh, It was followed by sequels in 1995 and 1996. Also, X-Men Storm will be coming to to the upcoming at Marvel's Midnight Suns as a DLC character. The Sony Twitter account posted an image of the Bloodborne box art, which sent social media into a frenzy, only for them to later take it down, and that really pissed a lot of people off because they thought that something was coming, and then nothing was coming, of course. Persona composer Shoji Maguro is making his own game, a strategy JRPG called Guns Undarkness, and it is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. Fashion retailer ASOS, ASOS has partnered with Guerrilla Games to produce a line of Horizon Forbidden West themed clothing, and it's some of the dumbest looking shit I've ever seen. <laughs> I wouldn't be caught dead in it. <laughs> More Death Stranding 2 smoke appeared this week, Travis, as Hideo Kojima posted a picture of himself with Herman Holst, the head of PlayStation Studios himself. They were enjoying a beer together. Kojima also posted a video of him video conferencing, excuse me, with actress Elle Fanning and the Game Awards Jeff Keighley. So something is up at the very least. If we don't have a state of play or a showcase that drops uh, anything about Death Stranding 2, it will, without a doubt, be at the Game Awards. Were they drinking the same beer? They had their own. They oh, had their own pint. Not real friends. They had a nice frosty pint. It looked delicious. Mm. 
probably a Foster's. Next nugget, a Halloween-themed event has begun in Fortnite, and it will last through November the 1st. A new Gran Turismo 7 update has added four new cars. The Maserati Merrick SS 1980, the Mazda Roadster NR, uh, NRA ND 2022, whatever the fuck that is, <laughs> Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR 1973, and the Nissan GTR Nismo, Nismo GT3 2018. What is this shit? What am I saying? I don't know. But I love listening to you read stuff you don't understand. It's like when you read those names <laughs> in Japanese. You ought to see me try to read like Hindu or some shit. Yeah. Or fucking I do. Terrific. I do enjoy the Nismos. I, I would love to have a GTR, but we'll see. Mm. Next nugget. Modern Lance McDonald has managed to get Hideo Kojima's PT Silent Hill demo running on PS5 using a jailbroken PS5 to unlock it and then transfer it via USB. Pretty neat. Why? You know, people, that's a very beloved piece of PlayStation lore. And uh, some people say it's the best demo ever made. Wow. Okay. Better than Nirvana's demo? I don't think so. (laughs) PlayStation Star support has been added to the browser based PlayStation Store, so you can be sure to accumulate your reward points while shopping there. The big new update for Disney Dreamlight Valley has dropped this week and features a new area themed around Scar from The Lion King as well as hundreds of bug fixes and quality of life updates. Oh, so they're fixing the bugs, the movie? Yeah. Yeah, the bugs bug, life. Bugs <laughs> life fixes is crazy. <laughs> that, see, that makes me want to, I just want to see it. I just want to see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I mean, it looks, in, don't get me wrong, I'm intrigued by this game. You know, mild, mildly, mildly intrigued. But I just, it seems like such a wormhole. The Women's Champions League is being added to FIFA 23 early next year, Travis. So, Red Dead Redemption 1 is no longer available on modern PlayStation consoles after it has been removed from the PlayStation Plus slash PlayStation Now services. It had been available since 2016. RIP. Rip. It's okay. We're getting a remaster. Yeah, I'm a fucking dick. <laughs> Next nugget, the Callisto Protocol developer Striking Distance Studios announced that the game would not be delayed after rumors began to surface this week that it would be pushed to early next year. In fact, they announced later in the week that the game had gone gold ahead of its release on, De- on December the 20th. Jesus, on December the 2nd, excuse me. And in a veiled shot at Gotham Knights, they also assured fans that the game would have a 60 frames per second performance mode. Hmm. Love it. I'm here for non-veiled shots. <laughs> I mean... Just go to Buffalo Wild Wings and you'll get them all day. Oh, yeah, just whatever. Yeah, just shooting from the hip. <laughs> Media Molecules Dreams received a new content drop called The Land of Lost Dreams just in time for Halloween, and apparently it's quite good. Push Square played it and said that uh, it was it was interesting. So, I don't know. Next nugget, website PlayStation Lifestyle reported that insider Tez2, who is normally leaking Rockstar-related info, claims that developers have begun receiving dev kits for a PS5 Pro. So that's no shock there. Timing is the only real question. I'm going to guess 2024. Completing the campaign in Modern Warfare 2 will unlock a slew of rewards for use in the game's multiplayer modes, including four operators, a weapon blueprint, and double XP. God of War Ragnarok looks like it's going to take up quite a bit of hard drive space, as images popped up this week appearing to show the game needing nearly 107 gigabytes on PlayStation 4 and 86 gigabytes on PS5 in the U.S., a big boy well, how much is it in not, not the u.s big boy what is it you said in the u.s how how much space does it take up in other countries it's bigger in other countries why is that i don't know i but it is i remember reading about it at one point it's got it's but i don't remember exactly the reason so i'm not going to pretend but there is there is some sort of reason maybe with certification and things they have to include in there that it's bigger um, in other countries also, the release date for the PlayStation 5 version of The Witcher 3 appears to have been leaked by British retailer Game. An employee posted a photo online that showed the release date as December the 9th in their system, and I cannot fucking wait. And I told you, Travis, if you remember this, I told you that they were going to release that game sometime around that Witcher spinoff show coming out on Netflix, which I haven't looked yet, but I'm going to look up and see when that is, and we'll see if Daddy was right about that. So we figured out that GameStop over there is called Game. Correct. <laughs> Fuck, this is a long article. Jesus. Took the Russians less time to kill Hitler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Witcher Blood Origin, which is the spinoff, premieres on Christmas Day on Netflix. So I think that checks out. I think you released the update December the 9th. 
you have the the show out a couple of weeks after that. You just got to get that synergy, that synergism. I think it makes sense. Also, website PlayStation Universe reported that the following games received update patches this week. SnowRunner, Destiny 2, Minecraft, Fortnite, Smite, Rainbow Six Siege, Final Fantasy XIV, No Man's Sky, Dauntless, FIFA 23, For Honor, Kana Bridge of Spirits, PUBG, Ark Survival Evolved, Battlefield 2042, and Gran Turismo 7. So if you've been waiting for some new content or potential fixes, check those out. Also, the NPD group reported that the PlayStation 5 was September's best-selling console in North America in both units sold and dollar sales. So it's mimicking what happened in the UK and for the month of September. That's a good sign. Devil May Cry 5 sales have surpassed 6 million copies worldwide since launch in March of 2019. The Outer Worlds has been rated yet again for PlayStation 5, this time by the ESRB, so it is coming imminently. PlayStation 1 game Harvest Moon Back to Nature has been rated for PS4 and PS5 for a PlayStation Plus premium release. It's your PS1 games. Finally. Fuck's sake. Electronic Arts will reveal new details on Star Wars Jedi Survivor sometime in December, according to journalist Jeff Grubb. Website Gamatsu reported that The Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure launches March 14th in North America and March 17th in Europe on PlayStation 4. I'm telling you, that game has been out for a decade. That game has been out for a decade, I swear. I think you're right. (laughs) Also, The Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie will launch next summer in the West for PS4 and PS5. Who knows how long that one's been out. Action RPG Yeez 9 Monstrum Nox will come to PS5 natively in the spring of 2023. 2D action adventure game Aspire Ina's Tell is out now on PS4. Adventure game Cuckoo's Lost Pets will come to PS4 on December the 6th with a PS5 version to follow sometime next year. Four-player cooperative beat-em-up dungeon brawler Bravery and Greed will launch for PS4 on November the 15th. That game looks awesome. Looks great. And finally, Ubisoft announced that a console version of their real-time strategy game Anno 1800 is in development for PlayStation 5. and your boy has registered for the closed technical play test that they're going to require me to sign a non-disclosure agreement for or whatever. What do you do on that? It's like uh city skyline or, you know, uh sim city type of thing. Build, you build up a, a place, but kind of like, maybe like civilization almost, but 1800. Yeah, I think so. That looks neat. The year 1800. I think so. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. And that's all for the news this week. I'm going to turn it over to, Travis now for this week's new games. On the 18th, we have a Plague Tale Requiem with 30 FPS, uh, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed, Kovax Pitch, Life in Willowdale Farm Adventure, mm-hmm. Bim's Fighting Herds finally is back out. On the there 20th, we, we have Batora Lost Haven, Gas Station Simulator, Get Robbed on Your Free Time, Narco. <laughs> Tempest. On the 29th, we have Gotham Knights on 30 FPS. Jojo Siwa wild, Worldwide Party. Do not support her. New Tales from the Borderlands and Persona 5 Royale. Very nice. It's a, it's a pretty good week this week. A few big ones. A Plague Tale Requiem, Gotham Knights. Although those are kind of all over the place from a, from a review standpoint. Persona 5 Royal, PS5 version. I know that's a popular one. Um, them, them's fighting herds. That's that fighting game, like you said, that has piqued my interest for a while now. But I'm just not going to pay forty dollars for it. I'll wait for it to go on sale. Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed is a big one. It's from Ilphonic, the people who made Arcade Again, and I have played that with uh, the gaming Nexus guys. That's a pretty fun game. As long as you have a, some people to play with, very cool. Uh, definitely worth checking out. But it's also forty bucks. Don't know if it's worth forty bucks, but maybe wait for a little bit of a sale. So yeah, not a whole lot coming out this week, but some big ones. It's uh, definitely quality over quantity this week for a change. And that's all for the new games, and we'll start to wrap the show up here. It's kind of a short one for us. Like I said, not a whole whole lot going on that was big this week. So what uh, what have you been playing, and what are you looking forward to? I definitely know I played Battlefield. Yes, I think we did. Don't know what happened. I don't remember anything. I think that was on Saturday. <laughs> I believe you're right. I want to say I played something else, but I don't remember what I played. I made a Dr. Pepper car on Gran Turismo as opposed to driving. So I can, you know, my car that I have in real life 
there's a race car version that you can drive on the game. So I got that car, made it a Dr. Pepper car, and you know, so I have that I have that to play around with now if I want to. Um I don't remember. I remember playing Battlefield and I remember like oh, we played the the six on six. Oh yeah, that was dope. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. I liked that a lot better. It was a lot of fun. I thought the I thought that it felt like it was more than six on six, honestly, which I kind of didn't expect because some of the maps I thought were going to be too big for six on six, but they really, they really have, I guess the way they pared them down, it, it kind of works pretty well. So I hope that mode stays. I know they have a 15, 15 mode now, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure they already had that plan, but you know, you always wonder, is it too much? Like at what point, you know, I know battlefield's known for like 60 on 60, but it just goes to show man, six on six is just, it, it it works for whatever reason that works works on call of duty it works on battlefield so had some fun with that i planned on rallying some this week but i couldn't convince myself it was worth being alive um at any point during the day so <laughs> uh-huh. i'll try to do that i want to i just i just really i get like these random urges to to rally so i'll probably do that some this weekend nice you say dirt rally is that the one you're gonna play probably gotcha yeah, we did play Battlefield, and I forgot that we played the Tactical Conquest, which is really cool. They just actually added, we were playing 8v8, I think. Maybe oh. it was 6v6. I don't know. But I think it was, was 8v8, because they just, I think they just added 16 versus 16. So, mm. yeah, I like the Tactical Conquest mode. I was seeing on Twitter that a lot of people didn't care for it. I don't really get that. I thought it was really cool, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not most people either, so. Well, they could play vehicles. That's why they hate it. Yeah, uh, True. But yeah, I would um, love to play some more Battlefield before the Modern Warfare 2 happens here very soon. I also played Dakar Desert Rally this week. I finished it up and reviewed it for Gaming Nexus. You can see my full review over there. I really enjoyed it. I think it's a very accessible game um, to anyone who likes to race, depending, you know, no matter what your kind of niches what you're drawn to like you have a sim uh, racing rig you're more like a simulation style racer you know i think it it's for you um i think you would enjoy it but it's also for me who enjoys more of an arcade racing game and i played mostly in sport mode which is the arcade like experience for that game and i i thought it was really good i thought the racing was good the locations are really stunning and especially when there's like a thunderstorm going on or like a snowstorm, that sort of thing. It's really cool. Um, it, it scratched an itch for me for sure. Uh, so I, I enjoyed that. I, I would recommend that if it sounds like something that you're into. And if you're curious, we, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I posted some gameplay on our YouTube channel, uh, the dual sense podcast. So you can watch it there and get a sense for it uh, before you pull the trigger. Uh, also am playing PGA Tour 2K23, that's my next game that I'm reviewing for the website. You know, I'm playing, there's only one single player mode, really, uh, career mode. So I'm playing as myself and working my way up to the PGA Tour. And I'll I'll uh, have more to say about that uh, probably next show because my review is due at the end of next week. So I'm going to spend a bunch more time with it. And Can you jump ship and join the Live Tour? Like, does it get just end? <laughs> Yeah, that would be really realistic, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, I'll have some more to say about that next week. The last thing that I've been playing is Modern Warfare 2, the campaign early access. I played the first four missions last night, and guys, it is really good so far. It's fucking dope. It looks like a fucking movie. And the way that they kind of scened it and framed it and did the the jumps to the different missions and the different locations, it's like a fucking Jason Bourne movie or, you know, uh, a military movie so it's it's really good um so far the campaign's really good very cinematic uh, i'm enjoying it i'm playing on the hardest difficulty well the second hardest i'm playing on veteran <laughs> fucking the nerd. hardest is realistic <laughs> what is it fucking nerd <laughs> well i'm playing on veteran at least for now because there's there's a trophy to beat it on veteran or realistic difficulty so i'm just going to try to do it the first time through um so i don't have to go back and play the game again uh, the trophies, like we were talking about in the group text with John the other day, the trophies really aren't that bad. It's a very attainable platinum, I think, on the surface. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully nothing is too crazy. Uh, there are some co-op trophies. There's no online multiplayer trophies, just co-op, from what I can tell, uh, which is online. 
but no competitive multiplayer trophies, I should say. So that's very good. But so yeah, it's a very good game so far. Looking forward to the multiplayer coming out next week for sure. And I'm trying to think of anything else other than Call of Duty, the the multiplayer, like I just said, coming out. I can't think of anything else really that I'm looking forward to. Looking forward to getting more time at PGA, getting that done. I'm looking forward to your PGA review. I, I have a feeling of where it's going to go, and I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you do based on some comments that I made today. Uh, so it's going to be great. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to call it like I see it. I'm going to call it like I see it. <laughs> so uh, I'll be sure to share with you boys once I'm done with it. But anyway, that's all we got. So we'll get out of here now. We hope you guys enjoyed the show. A rather short one, I guess you could say. We'll be back next week, maybe with some news of a PlayStation showcase to share with you all. But thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe on your podcast or YouTube, and you'll get a new episode delivered to you every Monday. If you could also leave us a review or a rating, maybe some stars, a thumbs up, it's very much appreciated. On YouTube, leave us a thumbs up, a like, and a comment, whatever all that good shit is. Don't forget to find us on social media. We would love to hear from you in chat, PlayStation, Twitter, at the DualSense Pod, uh, Instagram as well. Would love to hear from you. And oh, well, yeah, don't forget to uh, share us with a friend if you think uh, you might have a friend or a loved one who might enjoy the show. We'd be very appreciative if you would share us with them as well. So we'll get out of here. You guys have a great week. We'll talk at you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.